What's going on? Brian Tong here and welcome to Googleicious for all the Google goodness that we can pack inside of a show. Smartwatches and mobile payments are two of really the hot areas in the mobile space, so why not combine the two if you're Samsung? Well, according to Business Korea, Samsung is working on yet another smartwatch, but this one will be able to process mobile payments powered by PayPal. The unannounced smartwatch will reportedly rely on a fingerprint scanner to verify its wearer's identity. And of course, an unnamed Samsung rep told Business Korea that the earliest the third gen watch with biometric sensors will be seen is early next year. PayPal's partnership makes sense, especially after they recently put out an ad targeted directly at Apple's security issues. The new payment system reportedly will also send users promotions from nearby retailers based on location. Now, there's no word if it will be running Google's Android Wear or Samsung's Tizen operating system. In more gadget news, the Wall Street Journal and court documents confirm that HTC is making tablets once again after swearing to never make them again. Google selected HTC to make its upcoming 9-inch Nexus tablet. It's a strategic move since Google tends to change its partners from device to device. Now, HTC has received great reviews for its HTC One line, even though sales haven't matched up to that. And Google's relationship with Samsung really isn't what it once used to be since the two companies are now direct competitors in the mobile space. So we'll see if this partnership makes a difference as estimated sales for the Nexus tablet line have been mixed. And the Googs has another competitor, this time in the wearable space, after Sony revealed their own development plans for their own smart glasses called Smart Eyeglass. Yes, the name looks as bad as their first prototype, which almost looks like a rehash of their 3D glass frames that were paired with their own Sony TVs. Sony Smart Eyeglass will run Android 4.1, feature a 3 megapixel camera, microphones, an accelerometer gyroscope, an electronic compass, and brightness sensor. Now, it won't run standalone apps like Google Glass. Instead, it will use smartphone applications via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which already kind of kills the idea for me. Now, the SDK preview is available now, but this concept still has a long, long ways to go. All right, sticking with Google Glass, we might see the future face gadget in Canada soon after an informational card packaged with a replacement unit shows that it has been approved for use within the country, but we've heard no official word for a rollout in Canada yet. Now, Google Glass has always been one of Google's big idea projects, but co-founder Larry Page wants to think even bigger. You've heard about their smart contact lenses, driverless cars, and balloon-served internet. But according to the information, Page has proposed a second lab called Google Y to look at even bigger issues. In an initiative dubbed Google 2.0, Page's direct reports, senior VPs, and about 100 other employees participated and got together to talk about big ideas ranging from a more efficient airport design or a new approach to how cities work that would be planned out instead of organically allowing it to evolve. So everybody get ready because Google Town is coming. And in a few Samsung updates, the Samsung Galaxy Alpha, Samsung's first metal frame phone in the Galaxy line, will launch exclusively this Friday at AT&T stores, coming in three colors and starting at $199 for a 4.7 inch screen, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and a 12 megapixel camera. Now we also talked in past episodes about Samsung's push for a higher level of design with the upcoming A series, and Sam Mobile was able to get a sneak peek of the Galaxy A5 that's neither plastic nor metal, but it's said to be made from an alternative material that feels cold in the hand. Those are their words. Now the launch plans are also still unknown. And I'm sure some of you are watching are tired of hearing about the iPhone 6 Plus with its 5.5 inch screen. Well, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 is finally available for pre-order on Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile starting at $300 with a two-year contract. And the biggest and baddest phablet will go on sale on October the 17th. Don't worry, you don't have to get in line for it just yet. All right, guys and gals, that's going to do it for this week. You can always email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.